It's Sunday, December 17th, 2023. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. And I want to thank everybody out there for the prayers, the positive thoughts, the letters, all the support. None of this is possible without you. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support. Again, this does not exist. This channel does not exist without you. So thank you so much. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Let's get into this video today. A few things I want to talk about. And at the top of the list, uh, there's a couple videos out. One of them, uh, this movie, it's a trailer uh, of this movie called Civil War. I'm going to talk about this trailer in a few minutes. But really quick, there's another video out today, and it comes from Blackstone. It's a video of the Blackstone employees. Remember, this company, this private investment banking company, manages over a trillion dollars. And this creepy video, I, I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. It's quite disturbing, actually, of the Blackstone employees dancing around uh, imitating basically T Taylor Swift, uh, idolizing, uh, one of the higher ups is idolizing Taylor S Swift and they do this whole like musical, this whole Christmas musical. And I think that this is a company, one of the companies that is literally running uh, the world at this point. And these people are running around like they're five years old. Uh, very, very creepy. Um, very strange. If you get a chance, Google the Blackstone um, Merry Christmas video. Uh, you have adults acting like they're five years old. These are. This is a company, a private banking company that manages over a trillion dollars. And watching these people lip sync and dance and tap dance and wear little costumes, and it was very weird. Just, just very, very weird. If you've seen it, comment down below. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But you look at these people and you think, these are the people running the world or, or you know, a few of these people running the world, the very, very high ups. Uh, very, very um, weird, very strange. It gives you a very uncomfortable feeling. Uh, I saw it one time. I don't think I'm going to watch it again. Uh, I found it uh, quite disturbing. Uh, something very, very weird about it. But check it out. Comment down below. Now, let's talk about this film. It's called Civil War. It's coming out in April of 2024. Uh, $75 million budget. And I have to ask this question. Uh, I've watched this trailer three times in the last 24 hours. If you haven't seen the trailer, YouTube it, Google it, check it out. It's a couple minutes long. Uh... It's called Civil War, and it's coming out in 2024. Why was this movie made? Uh, there's no doubt that if you're watching the news, uh, whether it's uh, MSM or it's on social media or, or anything in between, there are people that have been talking about now for a few years, Civil War. And it is really resonating in the minds of people now, you see a country that is very, very divided. Uh, and this movie, I think, is going to really wake people up to the possibility of civil war right here in America. Why else was it made? There are parts of this trailer that I find a bit disturbing, and I never see movies. I may have to see this movie. Uh, if, it, if, it, if it is not a complete Hollywood sellout type of movie, I'm going to see it. But right now, um, nobody really knows too much of this movie. But it's going to, I think, wake up people to, to the possibility of what can happen and, and what, it, what it would look like. Uh, so in this trailer, you have two forces, Texas and California, making their way to the White House. Now, I don't believe California would be any part of this in reality, but this is the movie. It talks about Western forces, uh, a Florida alliance, a three-term president, and a, um, a group of states, 19 states, which succeed from the United States that are involved in this civil war. Uh, so I don't know what states there are other than Texas and, and um, California. 
I, I don't think in reality California would ever have anything to do uh, with an invasion of Washington, D.C. But it looks interesting. Moving on. Some of the disturbing things in the movie, and, and, and they should really make you think. It should be alarming because, you know, there is always the potential of this. We are very, very divided. There's a lot of things happening in this country. There's no leadership. People are getting very desperate. There's food insecurity. Uh, you're watching the middle class uh, being completely annihilated. There's more poor. There's more homeless. There's more desperation. And when you have these type of things taking place, this opens the door to the possibility of civil war. But in the video, it shows military hummers, helicopters, blown up buildings, blown up cities, tanks on the streets of America, fighter jets bombing parts of the United States of America, bombing its own people. So this, um, this looks really interesting. So think about airstrikes against Americans, soldiers, U.S. soldiers on the streets of America fighting U.S. citizens. This is civil war. So is this movie a premonition? Is it just somebody just, you know, thinking crazy? Or is it more than that? You know, sometimes these movies are ahead of events that are to, to take place. I don't really know. Haven't seen the movie. Um, if it's not a complete Hollywood sellout, uh, I'll probably see it. But it really will make people think. And just watching the trailer, it looks action-packed. It looks very, very interesting. And think about the timing of this movie. April 2024, have probably the most important election in our history coming up. What will the message be of this movie? I, I have no idea. Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative? Is there an agenda? I have no idea. It, will it divide us even more? Will it wake people up? I, I don't know. I hope it has a positive message. I hope there's some reality, something realistic. I hope there's some quality to this movie. But in the um, trailer, there is a, a looks like somebody in camo and a rifle, not military, a civilian, and it looks like they are holding some people hostage, possibly. And the one hostage says, hey, we're American. And the, other, the guy holding the rifle goes, what kind of American? So very, very interesting. If you haven't seen the trailer, check it out. If you haven't seen the Black Rock Christmas video, check it out. And comment down below your thoughts on any of these videos. Do the, is, there a, uh, is there another meaning uh, to these videos? Is there a message? Um, Black, or excuse me, the Blackstone video, uh, definitely disturbing. The Civil War movie, interesting. I'll say that. I'll say that. Shifting gears here. Uh, I was reading this this morning on The Hedge. Number of Americans in upside down auto loans continues to worsen. It just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? And, and so, you know, when you think about this, this movie, Civil War, how close, how, how possible is something like this, when you look at people losing 25 to 30,000 cars a day to the repo man, people defaulting, going bankrupt, losing homes, maxing out credit cards, no savings, half this country doesn't even have $400, the, 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 the entire country is bankrupt with $34 trillion of debt, people working paycheck to paycheck, they're not even making it paycheck to paycheck. You know, is there a breaking point to where people snap and begin to lash out? I certainly hope it does not get that bad. This would be um, a horrible event in history. We have very, very strong enemies out there that could take advantage of such an event here that um, it could change uh, the United States of America forever and the entire world. But things keep getting worse here, and that's not good. Consumers face more and more problems, such as elevated inflation, high interest rates, maxed out credit cards, lack of personal savings, and two years of negative real wage growth. The latest distress is the number of Americans in upside down auto loans has reached the highest level since 2020, according to this article. According to research firm 
edmunds.com. The number of Americans with auto loans underwater or negative equity in November reached an average of $6,054. So look at the average rate of a new car loan, 7.4%. The average rate of a used car loan, 11.6%. And many people have written that, that they've seen these rates much, much higher than this. Uh, the average new car loan, not the average new car cost, but the average new car loan is $40,000. The average new car is $51,000. That's the sticker price. But on average, the average new car loan, $40,000. How in the world is this sustainable? This, I mean, this is really beginning to get out of control. Not just beginning, but it's been getting out of control. But how much longer can this go on? Subprime auto borrowers, at least 60 days delinquent. 6.11%. That is a all-time high. That is a record. Think about this. Subprime auto borrowers, basically um, over six out of 100 are 60 plus days delinquent. And that number is only going to rise. These car owners are not going to be able to get out of this mess because they're upside down negative equity. They would have to come out of pocket in order just to sell their cars, just to get out. And most of these people are maxed out on credit cards, have no money saved up, cannot save any money. Many are losing jobs. And this is exactly what is going to happen in the housing market also when people begin to watch their equity disappear. And many people who pulled equity lines or HELOCs out of their homes, as prices of those homes go down, they still have to pay that money back. They're going to be severely upside down. So and, and unless they can come out of pocket, they cannot sell their house. Don't forget, there's closing costs, which is about 7 8 probably 8% closing costs uh, by the time you add in buyer and seller, agents, um, escrow fees, title fees, all that. So... This is going to get really, really ugly, and you can bet that this is all going to begin to really unravel. The beginning of the unraveling in 2024, it's already started, ladies and gentlemen, but it's going to accelerate now uh, in 2024. And how long this lasts, nobody knows. How bad is it going to be? Nobody knows, but I think it's going to be very, very bad. Um, for many people, this could have been avoided, but they, they fell into the FOMO. The fear of missing out. They, they had to have the cars. They had to have the house. They had to have the lifestyle. And now they're beginning to realize that they overpaid on the house. They overpaid on the cars. Uh, they're losing jobs. Their wages are not keeping up with inflation. And it's just going to continue to get worse. Wh what's going to improve this, this mess? What, what is possibly going to improve this disaster? I don't see America... Uh, manufacturing or making things. Uh, I see America buying things from other countries that make and manufacture things. Um, I see a country here that continues to print a lot of money, continues uh, to tell people to go and continue to buy things. Consume, consume, consume. How long can a superpower continue to survive when all it can do is consume? It cannot make or manufacture things. It prints a lot of money and it tells its population to continue to consume. Once the majority of this country can no longer consume, we're in very, very big trouble. Big trouble. And that day is coming because people are beginning to hit the wall now. They're maxed out. They've, they've used up everything they've had in savings. They've tapped into the retirements. They're maxed out on the credit cards. Their credit's destroyed. Uh, this is going to get very very ugly. I want to close with this last article, and it's another reflection or reminder of how this country is just circling the toilet bowl, how quickly we're heading into a third world country. When I would, when I would talk a few years ago about America heading into being a third world country, people laughed, just like the people laughed about the, the, there'll never be inflation. Uh, people laughed that the Fed will never raise rates that people can not, you know, will never go homeless. Uh, we can never be third world. Well, three out of those four have already happened to so many people. 
and, and have taken place. Um, and here we are now where we are heading into being a third world country. And article here on CNN, Greyhound bus stops are valuable assets. Here's who's cashing in on them. If people can't travel, that's a big problem. And it's a sad, it's a sad problem because think about traveling is, is freedom, right? Where no matter how you, how you travel, you could hitchhike or you could drive a car, you could get an Uber, you could jump on a Greyhound bus, you could get on an airplane, you could get on a train. There's something about traveling that is freedom, that you can go from point A to point B to C to D. You can go from one state to the other or to, from one country to the other. It's freedom. But if you can't travel, it seems like your freedom becomes limited. And that's a problem. And this is going to be a problem right here for 60 million people who are facing this new problem who depend on intercity buses. Intercity bus lines like Greyhound, Trailways, and Megabus are an overlooked but essential part of America's transportation system. Most people don't even think about it. I didn't even see a Greyhound, a Greyhound bus today or a Megabus or a tra Trailways bus, but they're out there. I, I, I haven't been on a Greyhound bus since I was probably six years old, taking a ride to O'Hare Airport with my parents. Um, but think about how the effect this is going to have on a lot of people in the inner city, poor people. Next question is why are all these bus terminals closing down across the country? Well, it says right here, high operating costs. That's a problem. Government underfunding. No, we have to send money to continue wars, but people don't have a way to, to transport themselves from point A to B because the bus terminals are closing down. And here's another one. Hedge funds are buying them up just like they're buying homes up. Very, very unfortunate. But here we, again, have institutional money now poking its nose in people's lives, buying up their homes, creating massive bubbles. Now they're buying bus stops, bus terminals, so that poor people in the inner city cannot travel so what do people do when they can't travel? I, they, they've lost a lot of their freedom. And as people become more dependent on the system to feed them, to clothe them, to put a roof over their head, to protect them, people lose their freedom. And this is why I say money is good. Don't worship money, but money allows you to have freedom. And you need to be doing whatever you have to do right now to make money. Again, let me repeat for the three people out there who will misunderstand this. Money is not my God. It shouldn't be your God. We should not be worshiping money, but money is a tool. Money allows us to have freedom. Your kid falls down, needs 20 stitches at urgent care. It's $500. Boom, $500. Transmission goes out, 4,000 bucks. Mechanic, here's 4,000. Fix it. I got to get on a plane to see my dying grandma. You know, here's $500. Give me a ticket. I'm gone. You know, Money allows freedom. It allows you and your kids and your family to have maybe a little more of a comfortable life uh, to put out those emergencies when, when they rise. When people don't have money and the transmission goes out, their life is chaos. They're in panic mode. They can't get to work. They could lose their job. They can't get their kids to school. I mean, their whole world is turned upside down. But if you have some money put away, if you have that cash reserve put away, you, know, you, you don't have to panic. You just get it fixed and you carry on. So this is why it's imperative that we're all working extremely hard, one side hustle, two side hustles, three side hustles, uh, working a, a business out of the house, uh, thinking outside of the box and just thinking, how can I make some money? What can I do? Uh, what kind of skills do I have? What, where, where can I pick up some extra hours? Can I work uh, on the weekends? Can I work in the evenings? Maybe do something that you really, really like to do. Uh, maybe you can get some overtime at work. Whatever it is, you got to be doing it right now. You got to be stashing cash right now for what is coming. Again, uh, money allows freedom. Money allows you to avoid panic situations. So we need to be putting money away right now. So I'm going to leave it there today. Uh, a lot happening. And, you know, just these videos that are coming out, the trailer, I, I mean, very, very interesting. Let me know your thoughts if you've seen it. Watch it. Comment down below. Uh, the Blackstone video, very, very disturbing. Uh, very strange. I will leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts on that one, too. Um, 
as always, I look forward to speaking with each and every one of you. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe.